Hello and welcome to Dice and Dungeons. Uh, I was asked to do a flip before who shows up, so there we are. Um, we are working on our Beholder Mini, which is partially done. Oh, okay, you are here? Mm, fine. Yeah. Um, so this is our Beholder that we've been working on. Um, We are part of the way through. I have some cleanup to do on eyeballs. I have a lot more bone plates to do. Exactly. Um, things like that. But we're coming along. Okay. We'll see if we can finish today. I'm not sure, but we'll see. We'll try. Um... I'm going to start by tackling the most annoying part, which are the bone plates that go under the eye stalks. The tradition is to do three. Okay. Right, but we're doing it with tweezers, this last one. It flipped right off screen. Okay. Um... Yeah, so we're going to be working on some bone plates today to start things off. I'm like, I'm going to see if I can rework this camera because I'm like directly behind it. While I do, I'm going to, maybe I'll do like an angle thing. Something like that, maybe. Uh, Dyson Dungeons is our channel. We stream painting streams like this. And we do a variety of other things. We do, um, well, mostly Dungeons and Dragons stuff. We have a... <sighs> What's a Dungeons Dyson Dungeons first? Um... We have, oh, angled painting. Yeah, I know, right? Here, we can even watch the rave happen. Oh. I know. It's been muffled. A dance party at a retirement home. I need to grab a little paper towel. Seems to have disappeared. So, before I start painting, let me find that. There it is. Okay. Make sure I take my thumb pan home after our next session. I need to figure out how to turn my home office into a suitable streaming zone, and that is key. Alright, I will try and remind you. Okay, now this is the... Uh, oops, tricky part, which I will have to undoubtedly clean up periodically. I already know I'm going to have to do some blue touch-up around various parts of this mini, but... Why don't we... I'll start over on 
one side and work our way around. They have like bone plates way down in the Yeah, mouse pad with the group art of our uh, D D group. For anyone watching later on YouTube or playback or anything. We do, do a D D session. Uh we Air them on Twitch at uh, 2 p.m. Eastern on Sundays. But then if you're watching on YouTube, we also have um, <laughs> bone plates already. Yeah. Um, we also have our whole campaign up on YouTube. So you can check that out if you enjoy that sort of. Thing. You saw your face on YouTube and that feels weird. I'm just saying how uh, the tongue glid seems pretty good. I'm not putting a ton of pressure on it. Okay. Go one eye stock at a time. Here. Not the not the easiest place to access in between all these eye stalks. And there's definitely a lot of edge cleaning that's gonna come uh, from all this bone plating. Hi, Witch Doctor Violet. Welcome to the chat. Um, as you can probably see, we're painting a beholder today. I'm trying to get the base coat in for these uh, bone plates that run up along the back of the eye stalks. Um, they're not in the most convenient location, so for reaching with a brush, and there will be some cleanup to do along the edges. And then we'll put, uh, I think, an umber wash on all of the bone elements of this beholder. Um, I think that'll probably end up looking the best. Yeah. 
kind of delicate work here. They have a cat guest. Uh, it just meowed at me. We have some sound filters on, so it probably didn't come through. But. Now I am just filling in while Greg is away on vacation. So he will probably be back this Friday next uh, next time. Um, assuming I finish the beholder today, I think. Boy, uh, the ones up top, the plates up top won't be so bad, but reaching in and under all of. This is a little challenging. And I have to be a little more careful with my hand. I got pretty cramped up on Monday. Dang it. That'll be a touch up. That's what is the hard part you can see right there. I, uh, I'll have to touch that up with the blue because I'm reaching my brush in between all these things. I'll sometimes hit a spot. It's not really that hard to fix. It's just sort of a little annoying. Yeah. Well, my problem... This is a messy spot here, too. Ugh. Okay. My problem is this is a fairly large mini, which means I can't um, put it on our handle. It's too big for that. But it also means... Well, it doesn't weigh a lot, the weight, when you're holding it constantly and moving it around starts to kind of build up in your hand. That I'll do for now. There's definitely a lot of cleanup to do around the edges, but this will work. Um, so what I can do now is start doing the bone plates along the top of the eye stalks. They come back again uh, along the top ridge of each eye stalk. So I'm just going to start on one side and slowly work my way around to the other.
got my brush actually for this. So that's one eye stock. Bone plates. What base color did I pick for the plates? This is bone white. Um, it's a nice sort of beige. It should take the um, should take the umber wash pretty well, uh, a light umber wash to give it sort of a organic bone feel. A little darker and more um, yellow than, like, say, the ivory. tired today it's Wednesday here when we're recording um, on YouTube it could be any day but um, you know just sort of get in through the week slowly but surely Was a little messy, but that's okay. That's what cleanup is for. Um, I'll probably use a darker blue than the flat blue I used for the base um, to clean up around the edges of all of this. Um, I'll also need to clean up some of the eyeballs. Some of the irises are better than others. Let's see, let me get to it. Um, I'll probably do that before I do the blue because I want to go back over the lids a little bit on some of these eyes. It's starting to come together here.
Trying to be a little uh, gentle and just let gravity do the holding for me. Uh, rather than applying pressure because my hand definitely was cramped for the day after uh, on Monday. Just clutching the mini all the time. Uh, kinda got a little sore. Alright, well there's three eye stalks painted. I think there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, ten eye stalks total. So, halfway there. I uh, don't actually have a drink with me, so um, to hydrate. Ooh, so I'm going to take a drink of water. Thank you. I forgot to bring one. Yeah, you get to know. It. Yeah, I'm working on a, a beholder. The, it's Stairmaster. Yeah, you want it to add some clear resin. Look at, with this many warning labels, it has to be good for you. Don't, don't do that. Yeah, it's, it's your little boy, Stairmaster. This is a uh, beholder I'm painting for uh, a family member, one of my cousins, who wanted one. Yeah, I know, he's way too big. He uh, sometimes is a little too heavy and starts cramping my hand after a few hours of holding. But, uh, yeah, Greg's on vacation, so I'm picking up his duties. Tell them they owe you a coffee. Alright. So... I'm trying to put these bone plates on the top without causing too much hassle for myself down the line. Because uh, I'll invariably have to clean up around them. But the less I have to, the better. I do like Colombian coffee. All 
All right, so this will be the fifth eye stock, which will be the actual halfway point. Once I'm done with it. Yeah, new phone. I think I have a super old phone sitting around that doesn't work anymore. That I never took, I haven't taken to recycling. Halfway on the bone plates. Getting a little bit better look at, at what this guy's gonna look like. I need to get better at rambling aimlessly like uh, Greg does. I get I get too focused in like you know the the painting part, and I start start to get a little too quiet. I when I think this show is about going on wild diatribes about absolutely nothing whatsoever. Not something I am inherently skilled at. It's sub Wednesday. Yeah, that's true. It is sub submarine sandwich Wednesday. I don't currently have a submarine sandwich.
There, that's a there's a sub. <laughs> I I paint a submarine sandwich and there's a lot of saying hashtag <laughs> doesn't work here, yeah. There's a lot going on when I looked away to paint a submarine sandwich on the cardboard. Now I've painted a sub. That's these are the deli meats. <laughs> yeah, if you say hashtag before anything, it immediately makes it okay, right? Is that what you're where we've decided as a society? You could use a literal hashtag. What would be the fun in that? Hashtag, it's a prank, bro. Yes, that is, that is a hash tag. I almost said hash brown. idea what's going on in chat anymore. last chat give just living his best life yep that all checks out all right three more eye stalks then i'm gonna get out the scarlet clean up some eyeballs um and i might break out the blue after that to do some some edge cleaning. Make our little beholder in recent news. This is just a minute. Dungeons and Dragons is just improving math. Yeah, I know, that's so disappointing, right? We were promised that, you know. It is going to lead you down a dark path, but it's just a game about math and the imagination.
Don't want kids learning math. That would be horrible, right? What's our favorite submarine and what's our favorite sandwich? Let's see. Um, submarines I know very little about. Um, I'm going to say my favorite one is um, the the Red October, there was a movie about it. And it had Sean Connery on it, I want to say. Titan 1C, the first single per- is that an actual submarine? I don't- I know nothing about submarines. Really? Who has never watched The Hunt for Red October? I don't- honestly- I mean, if I'm honest, I think I saw- it was in Gun Connor. Sean Connery and Alec Baldwin, yeah. I honestly, I don't think I've seen it since it came out. Um, so I, I'm not sure I could really tell you anything about it other than it's a submarine movie and there's John Connery and they're looking for I can definitely name several submarine movies if that helps though. We got obviously there's The Hunt for October. There's Run Silent, Run Deep. The Are you talking about uh Rust or whatever it was called? Where they had the live gun on set for some reason. We're getting off topic from submarines, I think. Submarine movies. Hunt for Red October. Run Silent, Run Deep. Dust Boat. Uh, there's a couple episodes of Star Trek that are submarine movies. They like to do that. Submarine references. <laughs> um Yeah, but we're not we're not going to. And I haven't we haven't talked about favorite sand sub sandwiches yet either. Uh, 
what is a train if not a land submarine? It's long. It has. It, yeah, it goes on rails just like a submarine. If I know anything about submarines from uh, Disney, Disneyland, it's that they go on rails. Is the submarine ride in Disney's on rails? Okay, so we have some bone plates uh, painted in. They are not washed yet, so they're a little bright. Um, they will be toned down. But what I want to do first is get out some scarlet and do a little touching up. Um, around the eyeballs on the tongue that I might have broken. Um, things like that. So we're gonna <laughs> I thought the real super train was the uh, one from was it Spider-Man 2 or 3? that almost killed Tobey Maguire. Supercar was a car, an airplane, and a submarine. I don't think I ever saw Invincible. Was that the cartoon with the superheroes? I need a nice dark blue. This one will do okay. Uh huh, yeah. There's only one or two cartoons of superheroes, I'm pretty sure.
There was a cartoon at a teen that turns into a car. So, like, kind of like Transformers, but, like, back reverse. Yeah, you need to be pretty super to make a seaworthy car. I guess. So I'm cleaning up around the eyes right now. Actual synopsis. They really were just like, hey, we'll try anything. Hey. I honestly have no idea what, what to do with this information. some like stretches and stuff that I've been requesting. Uh, I've been focused on these eyelids.
Thank you for the stretch. Do you think it happened? I think he crashed his wagon to an experiment merch. Self crimes of his girlfriend and his talk. God, what? A talking dog god. Were they just trying to go for like some Scooby Doo talking dog thing? Quite confused about what's going on with this show. the name of well it's the sudden addition of a maybe talking dog who's a god I think I can relate to the shows you're talking about. It's almost made just for me. Are you doing a reference to... Oh God, what's the name of that author? Benji Ito.
Very solid reference, yep. You sure referenced it. I don't really like horror, so I don't actively choose to watch it, but yes, it is pretty weird. That's why you recommend more Molkar? Yeah, there you go. Molkar is pretty solid. Now if you want to talk shows of things that are also cars... That's... that's one of the good ones. Supercar had Mary and that's really Nothing quite like being told about a bunch of shows I've never seen or heard of before. That Korean show with dolls, I have no idea. I think I've ever been so happy to have watched as little TV as I did relatively when I hear about all these weird shows. <laughs> 
<laughs> like, what on earth were they doing with television? Billy Fantasy War of the Dragons. It's no longer on Netflix, though. <laughs> well, I guess that's a shame. Chinese mythology done with puppets and a billion different characters. He had no idea what was going on. I was hoping to make it my personality for a while, but I never bothered. <laughs> the opening was three minutes long. Well, I'm sorry you never got the chance to make it your personality. minutes and 46 seconds long they paid for the rights to use that song so they were using the whole song you know <laughs> you finished a single episode sounds like a really good sh show Unnecessarily epic and everyone dresses fabulously. I mean, that sounds okay. That's nice. I'm always for that, for, for gay shit.
I'm touching up some of the yellow. It's a very translucent yellow. This sounds like quite, quite the show. This was all puppets. puppets so which is it are they puppets or not puppets what Korean Barbies <laughs> what? okay so they're like uh, like dolls no okay Just searching for this because I'm having trouble imagining what this looks like. These are like intense puppet doll things. I mean, it looks like, just from a very, very short search online there, it looks like the War of the Dragons was only one of several. <laughs> Except for Elkoon, right?
Let's turn that guy around, Billy. Yo. I don't know. They take a long time to print. We can get you on stream being bad at painting. <laughs> That's very true. Okay. We're getting close to the next steps here. You need a reason to take some. If we can get some focus. getting close to um, washing all this bone color here um, make him look a little less flat I think I'll I'll wash the bone and then we'll take break take a break um, my umber wash.
Oh yeah, those uh, guys out in the forest cooking things. Those are pretty cool. Yeah. Dyson Dungeons cookbook. Not like our food is a primary theme of our show. It is pretty good content. It's pretty much what Soria does with her uh, her magic fry pan out in the woods. Watch my cat eat better than you do. <laughs> Do I need to do, like, uh, Soria cooking in the woods content? Based on what I'm hearing here. Mm. 
Just bring one of the cast iron. This camera's not set up for left-handed people. Uh, take a ca one of the cast iron pans out into the woods and just sort of cook things. Studio fix <laughs> While we live in woods, I have cast iron and a camera. I'm like there's I guess there's nothing stopping me. Really helps you from screaming at, stop you from screaming at the office. They are always very calm and relaxing sort of videos, aren't they? You can see we're starting to get sort of toned in with the the umber wash here, looking a little less uh, flat. We're gonna do some work on the eyes as well. I mean, we want them to be bright and intimidating. It's a beholder, but um, probably some uh, light work around the corners of the eye, the edges, that sort of thing. Um, when we get to it. But we're going to do bone plates first. Um, only thing that's bone white, basically, is getting some umber treatment. probably going to do is a little after uh, this dries we're gonna do a little targeted um, relightening in a couple spots with the bone white dry brush dry brushed on but first we have to do all of these plates around the top I'm gonna go around and get the inside ones first because they're a little bit more of a pain.
and to reach, as we can see. Yeah, once we once this dries, we'll take our break once we get all the umber wash on. Um, and once it dries, we're gonna go around and dry brush back on some of the light. Um, especially up on the bone plates in the face and around here to brighten them back up in select areas. Um, and that will help create sort of this dynamic range of color within the bone. We're getting some uh, lower, darker tones in first here. Now we'll do the top bone plate. I think he's looking more cohesive. I frequent Fire Mom. Looking a little more cohesive with the. Uh... <laughs> um, the umber wash on. but we'll want to bring that back up a little. And I'm gonna wanna take some, I'm gonna do a little touch on the eyes when we get back as well using a gray wash. Um, just around the edges, working in so that they have a more some more depth to them they don't look quite as flat
They're coming along. Obviously, I haven't touched the base at all yet, so that will be something to work on after break as well. Bone plates are washed. You can see he looks a little more cohesive now that they are toned in. Uh, I'm gonna do the eyes now because it'll give me time to fix them when I mess them up. And I'm not gonna go with a dark gray, I'm going with just gray. I don't want to go overboard on the eyes because they should be, they're a magical creature. Um, they should be a little intense. So just get a little bit of this gray wash. gray wash might be too gray so maybe I'll, I'll go down to a dark gray going around the outer edge here and I want this brush to be 
Where do you try? Just to color in the eye a little. Pretty dry. That's how dry. I don't want a ton of uh, wash on my brush, but I want to give some dimensionality to these eyes. I don't like a bolder shape. These aren't eyelids. I'm uh, I'm shading in around the edges of the eye um, to give it a little more shape, the appearance of a sh you know the the curve of the eye. So I'm just going around the outer edges to darken them um, slightly so that it has a little more, you can see the curvature of these giant eyeballs a little better. <laughs> I was like, so dry there was nothing on it. Their inability to sleep and stop taking in data should be a part of what drives them to madness. I kind of, I like that. They're just constantly awake and that's why they, over, over the years, get more and more out of control. That's a pretty solid, like, uh, aberration story. Because you can be like, why on earth would they be unable to sleep if, if they need it? And it's like, well, it's an aberration. They're, they're messed up. This is, I'm not sure how well the camera is even going to, time for your lunch. Have a good lunch. I'll probably be taking a break for lunch shortly as well, actually, so have fun. thing while I have this dark gray out I'm gonna do is work a little in between the teeth here just to bump them up a little Oh, no, 
of shade in a little on some of these mandibles, which I feel like could be a little darker. Just in a couple select spots. I'm gonna also get darker in the back of the throat here and do the tongue while I'm in here. So I'm going to let our beholder dry, uh, take a little break. Um, when we come back, I'm going to tone up some of the bone plating, especially around the face and teeth at the edges by dry brushing back some of the base color um, just to get it up again. Uh, there's not just a spot that needs some, some gray. Um, tone up, tone up some of the teeth again so that they show really well the edges of some of the bone plates, that sort of thing. And then we'll probably work on the base a bit. But I think, I think our Stairmaster here is coming along. Let me know what you think in the comments and all that. Um, yeah, so we'll be back shortly. Uh, thanks for watching so far, everyone. Um, stick around and uh, hope to see you all soon. Hello, back from break. Um, while I was on break, I was informed that uh, we might have someone coming over, a sister-in-law. So I'm going to probably, I'm going to keep working here on our little beholder buddy, but um, I'll probably end up ending a little early. I just saw a little spot that's going to bother me. I did get some coffee. I drank it all upstairs, so I did hydrate, sort of. Um, so what we're going to do to um, 
move through the rest of this uh, day. I'll be ending early, obviously, like half an hour or so. Um, I'm gonna dry brush on some of the bone white on some of the edges where the bone is maybe less worn or more worn, I suppose, actually. Um, but to accomplish that, I'm gonna take my brush, get some on it, remove almost all of it, and then just do a dry brushing. I'll just lighten up the tip a little. Create some more highlighty effects. So you can sort of see on this side versus that side how much more the tip stands out by doing that. So I'm going to go around and do that to a good portion of these uh, bony bits. As with a lot of mini making, there's a lot of uh, layering that happens. I'm going off screen. I'm like down here. I know I'm I'm leaning in a lot. Also, my hair is a bit of a mess. We have a cat visitor. Yeah, so we're just bringing these uh, mandibles back up a little on the tips. And what we're doing, it's really, it's like the high points are where they're going to be the most worn. That's sort of a way to think about it. So they're going to tend to be the brightest. Um, like the teeth will presumably get worn a fair bit, so they want to be a little brighter at the tip. Like that. Create sort of that gradation. So you can see I dry brushed here at this end and not on this side yet. And you can sort of Oh, the beholder's wandering off over here. There. Oh, 
I'm gonna want to get the bottom teeth as well. Which got a little dark, so... There's the beholder puns. The highlights do a lot of subtle work to bump up our beholder buddy. sort of edge here would be a little brighter Good. I'm glad we're getting our beholder puns in. Yeah, I think you get some vibrancy by doing this, I think. That's really nice. Gonna hit the little jaw horns. No. gonna go along some of our eye stock scales as well you don't want to go overboard on this but and sometimes you hit an eyeball with it so I'll have to clean that up but that's okay
Yep, I guessed. Cat, who is meowing like crazy at me. He wants attention. But he's also very sheddy, so I don't want to get too much cat hair in my miniature. So I'll just give him a quick petting. See, so yeah, I think that brightening up of the bone really helps sell the look. So what I'm going to do now is get um, my base blue out, do a little touch up here and there. Um, And some highlighting, just very delicate highlighting on like the face. But first I wanna get this spot that I with the sort of mottled blue skin look that I have going. I don't need to be too, um, too much on the blue highlighting. It's a fairly inconsistent skin color, a mottled blue, um, but I am going to do a tiny bit right up on the, the face here where it'd be the lightest. And then another area where I want to highlight a little with some dry brushing is along the cheeks. 
Um, I've darkened them in to really get the, uh... Um... To bring out some of the cracks and the, the sort of sinew and crevices in the cheek. But now I want to get the highlights back up on the, the surface and get some of the red I've put in there. Um, as more of a subsurface. So I'm going to take the dark sand that I used as a base coat. What it feels like ages ago. And I'm sort of focusing on the high spots where they'll be the most sort of flesh. I'm bringing this up a fair bit because it is a little dark. Then I'm going to do the same on the underside here where I probably washed it not oh so long ago. This area does not get looked at much, so... But I want to get it a little more consistent color. and under the jaw as well. Uh, I think our beholder's looking mighty fine. So what I'm gonna do for the next bit is get some of the, um, the base painted in. First, I'm going to do the stem. Give this a nice mixing. <laughs> what? What meme was that? I'm doing sort of a dark gray for the stem, something subtle that won't really stand out too much. I'm starting with the hardest part, which is gonna be the part that connects to the body. I'm 
Needs more hot pink? I already have some in the mouth. Right there in the mouth. Simple dark gray to sort of be a neutral element. Um, and what I'm gonna do actually is there's a rim around it. I'm gonna paint that dark gray as well around the terrain. So this is just gonna rough it in, and after we paint in the terrain, we'll make a more fine line around it. But now we're up sort of off, but I'm just trying to get it nice and rounded. Okay, so. Um, the last bit, slide you back in the center will be the uh, terrain itself. Um, I'll probably do that in like a flat earth. I'll be handling the model a fair bit. So rather than rubbing off paint with my fingers, I'm gonna put on a glove. This will protect the hand and the model. Um, so I'm thinking it's got like this crumbly rock sort of base. Um, so I'm going to do, I think, flat earth to give it that sort of brown rock look. And then we'll pretty much be done. I don't know, what do you guys think of our... Uh, our guy. Dare Master looking pretty sweet. Good. So I'm going to start by doing the edge. Sounds like we have our uh, visitors coming. I'm going to go around the edge here and then paint into the middle. Um, 
probably not the best view for everyone, but I want to uh, keep it as stable as possible, so I'm actually just setting it on its base. No, Charles the Dungeon Tile. I know, right? Now that the outer edge is painted on, um, I'm going to get up to the stem. And then we can just fill in between. And then all this will need is a little umber wash to give it some... just do the umber wash off stream because uh, I don't want this to dry a little. I don't know. We'll see how quickly it dries. Yeah, that's going to take a minute to dry, so, um, and our guest is here, so I'm going to, uh, give this a base a bit to dry, <laughs> and just give it a wash, um, and that'll sort of finish it up, but here is Stairmaster, our, uh, Beholder. We'll take some pictures, I'm sure before I send it off as it's present. Um, yeah, pretty intimidating. Nice, big, mean-looking beholder. 
Um, yeah, I don't know what to say. Uh, if you're watching this on YouTube, uh, please like and subscribe. Um, I appreciate you coming on this little journey with me. Uh, we do this uh, painting streams Monday, Wednesday, Friday from 10 a.m. Eastern to 2 p.m. Eastern on Twitch. And uh, we do our D&D campaign Sundays at 2 p.m. Eastern on Twitch as well. All of it ends up on YouTube. So you can always check us out there at Dyson Dungeon. Find just search Dyson Dungeons um, on YouTube. And uh, yeah, thank you for for joining me as I finally paint this uh, present. And if you're watching Dan, um, I guess very belated Merry Christmas. Um. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so all that's going to be left to do, wash this base once it dries to get the crags so you can see them. Uh, and we're, I'm going to do a UV coat on this to protect it from sun and handling. A little matte coat, which might take a minute to spray because of all the cracks and crevices. But yeah, thank you for watching. And we will see you. Uh, I think Greg will be back this Friday. All right. Bye.